Hello, my fellow Americans. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Thursday, April 11th, the year 2013. The Pledge of Allegiance. A couple days ago, I was uh, driving along the coast, and I was listening to talk radio, and I think it was the Lars Larson show. And Lars was talking about how I guess there's some state senator here in Oregon that wants to make saying the uh, Pledge of Allegiance mandatory in our public school system. And he wanted to uh, have some people, the naysayers as he calls them, to call in. Unfortunately, I couldn't call in because one, the uh, cell phone reception along part of the coast is really spotty. And the other thing is, it's against the law in this state to talk on a cell phone while driving. And I just don't like to give my money away for stuff like that. So, but I thought maybe I'd uh, relate a story in this video, and I may have spoke about it before. Now, you see I got my Proud to be American cap on with, the, uh, with our flag. Thing is... When it comes to saying the Pledge of Allegiance, I can't pledge allegiance to the Republic. Because, see, the Republic is made up of elected officials who don't seem to understand our Constitution. So I can't pledge allegiance to that. No. In fact, way back, I think it was in ninth grade, in homeroom, we used to say the Pledge of Allegiance every day. And we had this new kid come in. His name's Trace. I'll leave his last name out of it. But if you really dug out, I think he was the only Trace in, the, in, in there. But that's not what's important is. See, Trace was a hippie. He used to wear jeans and a jean jacket. He had the long hair. And on the back of his jacket, he had the American flag sewn on upside down, which is a sign of distress. And so one day in class, Trace didn't stand up for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We're like, come on, man, stand up. So it was kind of a stand down between him and the teacher, and he wound up going to the office. But walking home that day, I caught up with Trace because I lived in this neighborhood and he lived in the neighborhood adjacent. So I was walking home, and I said, Trace, come on, man, how come you didn't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance? And he looked at me and goes, what the hell are you doing standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance after what, you know, the man's done to your people, you know, made you into a slave? And that got me thinking. Next day, I didn't stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. You see, back then, those hippies, they questioned authority. Now, I didn't agree with everything that they were about and still don't. But the part about questioning authority and not just taking the man's game and swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. I mean, recently, if you watch my uh, video on uh, ghetto physics, you'll understand what I'm talking about, about the game. You see, this flag is a symbol. I mean, the flag is just a rag. You know, those colors are just colors. But in that configuration, it symbolizes something. But that which is sim symbolizes has been perverted. and it's We all know that. I mean, the forefathers didn't fight for independence only to be taxed more than what the king would have taxed us. you got to think about it. I mean, in the state of Arizona, which I visited recently, I might have told you this story before, I went and I bought four bags of Mexican charcoal, the good stuff. So when I'm doing my barbecue, it tastes makes the meat taste great. It's, uh, what is it, mesquite, I believe. But it's the, it's the real deal. It was three sixty nine dollars a bag. So I'm doing the math in my head real quick, thinking, okay, that's going to be 11 and change, because I knew there was some tax. And the lady said, that'll be 12 something. And I'm like, what? And I look at the screen, it was like, yeah, three times three sixty nine, dollars but then there's a tax, over a dollar in tax. I still don't know why we, we let them get away, but that's kind of drifting off the main topic. The topic is the Pledge of Allegiance, and I don't think it should be mandatory. If people want to say it, they can say it, but the thing is, is once again, you're playing the man's game you're, you're, when you do that. 
you are you're you're training your kids to pledge allegiance to something that no longer exists as intended. How can how can you pledge allegiance to the flag when they want to take away your Second Amendment rights, your First Amendment rights, your Fourth Amendment rights, your Fourteenth Amendment rights? You just name it, they want to take it away. And you know I'm telling you the truth, and if you don't believe me, look it up on Google, look it up on the Internet. You can triangulate it. You can get it from three different sources. All these different executive orders and these acts of Congress. How can you pledge allegiance to the Republic when the Republic makes laws that exempts Congress but puts it on you, like Obamacare? You know what? I know. Chances are, if you've seen one of my videos before, I'm preaching to the choir. But maybe this video will get out there and some people who haven't stopped the question authority might just do so. Because once again, we're playing the man's game. See, if you watch my videos, you know I just did one from the 48 Laws of Power. Where if you control the options, you basically control the outcome. Think about it. Gun control. What's that about? Once again, the freedom equation. So long as their power is greater than our power, we the people, they can impose their will upon us. That's why they want to take away high capacity magazines. That's why they want to take away so-called assault rifles. It's got nothing to do with the safety. I mean, just recently some crazy kid stabbed, what was it, 14, 16 people with an X-Acto knife down in Texas. Are they going to outlaw X-Acto knives? No. Why? Because exacto knives really don't pose a threat to the police state that we're living in, in the Obama regime. And the uh, thing is, it's not just Obama. It was Bush before him, the Bush regime. It, it's all the same. It's a snake with two heads. It's the same snake. Republican, Democrat. Do I have a solution? Yes, I do. The solution is, is you've got to stop playing their game. You know, we have this piece of paper called the Constitution. We got another one called the Declaration of Independence. But it's just a piece of paper. In reality, it only means what they want it to mean. See, it's up, and they want you to swallow their game and take it and play it. If you refuse to, you say, you know what? Nobody gets to tell me what kind of gun I can own. Screw you. You, you get your own gun and you stand up for yourself. You don't have to brag about it. You don't have to spread it around. But you have your own weapons. So if you need to, you can defend yourself against all enemies, foreign and domestic. See, that's what it's supposed to be about. See, back in the day, the day meaning in the 1700s, you know, the government had muskets, the people had muskets. But think about it. Who was the militia? The militia were people like you and I who owned part of this country, who had a farm, who had a home. We were going to defend it. From who? The enemy. From who? The oppressor, being the king and the redcoats. But nowadays, who is the oppressor? Guess what? It's the U.S. government. The thing is, it's not just the federal government. You peel it back a level. It's the state government who puts their thumb down on us. You have to get a license for this, a license for that, tax on this, tax on that. And then you take it another level. It's the county government. Oh no, before you can build, you got to get a building permit. It has to be, you have to pay for an inspection. This, that, and the other. And, and then you come on down. It's the city government, the same thing. So no matter which way you turn, it's just oppression. It's like in the ghetto, law of octaves. The problem is, is no matter which way you go, up or down, it's somebody oppressing you. You know, my neighbor, this is where it stops. They're not oppressing me. My neighbor to the east, to the north, to the south, to the west. They leave me alone. I haven't seen them in months. Guess what? I leave them alone. We live in peace and harmony. They're not telling me what I can do and can't do on my land. They're not saying I need a permit to hunt, or I need a permit to fish, or I need a permit to build, or I need... No, I don't have to get anybody's permission. And you see, if you play that game, if you play their game, they win. If you just start doing things on your own and say, screw you, there might be consequences, but that's what the Second Amendment's all about. It's about giving we the people the power to say no to tyranny. 
So, no, I can't pledge allegiance, I refuse to pledge allegiance to the Republic for which it stands because the Republic is corrupt. Now, if that makes you hate me and never want to watch my videos again, First Amendment, that's your freedom. But, I hope, I may have made you think about something because we all know it's a bunch of garbage what we're going through. And every which way you turn, they are gaming us. Financially, they're gaming us. They're now gaming us with our health. They're gaming us with our food. Monsanto Protection Act. Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. That they have an act to protect Monsanto? You see, how can you pledge allegiance to this republic? How? You tell me. Because I can't. But I, I know one thing, my fellow Americans. It is really time to wake up and smell the tyranny.